Hey, everybody. Welcome into the conference room. It's episode seven, and we are lucky enough to have Coach Cooper, the West Branch Warriors, joining us here on episode seven. Coach Cooper, man, uh, before we get into everything, back to work now, huh? Oh, absolutely. Uh, you know, two a days starting and everything, you know, it's a, it's a busy time of the year, but very exciting. Very exciting. Absolutely. Uh, let's talk about the off the off season program for you guys and the Warriors. One thing I know about your program uh, that's been over the over the past few years too, even before you took over, is how hard and how serious your players uh, take the off season program. Uh, talk a little bit about how hard they worked and what they were working on this off season. Um, I think that we just took an approach that you know we're going to be a little bit younger, so we want to make sure that we get you know more physical. Uh, and, and try and get as experienced as possible over the last couple of months with, you know, some some battle tested workouts and whatnot. Um, and then just coming together as a team, trying to develop some type of leadership, uh, even if it's from younger guys as sophomores mm -hmm. and juniors, uh, because we have such a small senior class. So those guys have really taken that in stride. And we've had a great uh, participation rate for the most part. And, um, you know, we're excited about where the season's headed. Yeah, and it's, it's got to be a, a challenge, too, for you as a coaching and a coaching staff. Uh, when the team has had so much success now over the last few years, how I, I guess how do you keep the energy where it needs to be? How do you how do you keep from any complacency setting in when you've just had success after success these last few years? It's definitely a challenge. Um, you know, that's something that, you know, you're, you're faced with on a day to day. And we're, we're really talented. Again, kids know the expectation of our program now. Um, so they know that, you know, this is how we do things. This is our expectations and the drills and the uh, practice structures and just the way that we compete on a day to day basis. Um, and it's for us as coaches, you know, it's just the challenging part is to uh, get those kids to not be complacent, like you said. So, you know, staying hungry. Obviously, there's, you know, a thousand different news articles and things out there. And, yeah. you know, we like being under the radar. And, uh, you know, you can always use those different things to get some chips on the shoulders as well. But, um, you know, we're challenging our kids on a day to day basis in practice. Uh, we want to make it difficult. We want to make it a challenging thing for them. So games are uh, hopefully easier for those guys. So, um, you know, it's a different different mindset for us than we have had in the years past. But our kids are responding well to it right now. Yeah, it seems like some of your kids, man, really in the off season, talk about pushing themselves to limit. And on social media, you know, obviously you, you could pay a little more attention. And two guys that come to mind, not to single them out above anybody else, but I look at a Boston Mulnix. I don't know if he was ever out of the, the weight room. I don't know if you could have got him out of the weight room. And, and it seemed like every time I got on Twitter, Joey Jackson was in another camp running routes. I mean, as a head coach, when you're watching some of your players, you know you're going to count on this year. You know you're going to lean on them. And you see how hard they were working this offseason. It's got to make you proud as a head coach. Oh, absolutely. You know, those guys have great parents, great families. Um, and they have a desire to play at the next level and they're going to do everything that they can to be successful over the next couple of years. And, you know, like you said, Boston in the weight room, um, cool. you know, he was at a bunch of different camps as well. And uh, Joey's been working really hard on his speed, working in the weight room, doing a bunch of different things to kind of perfect his craft. Um, and we're going to lean on those guys because, you know, they're, they're, they've done it before and they're mm -hmm. extremely talented and they're great representatives of our, of our program. Now, I want to talk about about you for a second. Uh, last year, coming in as a first year head coach uh, and having such an amazing regular season, and then going so deep in the playoffs, Coach Cooper. But you know, you you kind of had an unorthodox start to your coaching career. What I mean is, a lot of times a new coach comes in, uh, maybe the program's down. May, you know what I mean? Maybe they're they're kind of starting. You know, uh, from building everything from you know from the floor up. You came into a situation uh, with a coach Harris who had the the program. Uh, running in a really good place and not only that but he stayed on to help as an assistant coach so and you came in with something that was already a success is that almost sometimes more pressure to come into a situation like that where it's not torn down you got to rebuild it it's already it you know it's where it needs to go and there's a standard did you find that to be more of a challenge personally um, you know, I, I just love the kids in the community that I'm in right now. Mm -hmm. And those kids have responded to all of our coaching, you know, with our different, you know, styles of offense and defense over the last couple of years. And, you know, I, I expect to, to have great teams in the future. I expect to have great teams this year, you know, like we, we expect to win. And, and when you expect that, that pressure that comes with it, you know, we want those, we want those pressures. We want those expectations. You know, we want to be in big games. We want, you know, uh, to, to go deep into the playoffs. Those are all things that you strive for. So when you have those, you know, it's you can do a little bit more. You can push a little bit harder. You know, we can get to a different spot and hopefully we can continue even going further. You know, we've been we have had that uh, 
we haven't been able to get over that hump of the regional finals. And, and that's, you know, that's our goal is to get to the final four and then see, you know, how we go from there. But, um, you know, having those expectations, I think is important for the growth of our program. Another cool thing you touched on, uh, Coach Cooper, is uh, you talked about how uh, we mentioned just by name uh, the Molnicks and the Jacksons. They have aspirations to play on Saturdays after a done playing on Fridays. But this program over the last few years has gotten quite a few kids playing on Saturdays, would be that D1, D2, D3. The West Branch program's putting out college caliber football players right now. Absolutely. And, you know, Jimmy's and Joe's over X's and O's, you got to have guys to do it. You know what I mean? So we've been really fortunate over the last couple of years to have those types of guys. Um, and then just the impact that the game of football has on those kids for them to want to go play, for them to go want to coach, for them to go want to be involved in some some way. Um, you know, that's important for us as, as coaches. We want to we want to showcase what the game's done to us and what the mm -hmm. game's done for us. And, um, you know, that love of the game, what you learn from it. And, you know, I think that that's what we've been able to do the last couple of years is, you know, when you, you showcase the love of the game and the, the way that we practice and the way that we play and the way that we have fun with the game, you know, those kids want to keep doing it. And that's that's important for us as our program is we want to pr produce as many college players as possible. So those guys get those opportunities to make relationships and to have those experiences at that next level. Now, uh, as, as we look ahead to the 2023 season, obviously, uh, Drew DeShields is, is, is a Drew DeShields. I mean, he's going to play ball on Saturdays now. What a career he had. And for a lot of teams, like, oh, you know, man, we got to start over a quarterback. Bo Alizas, no stranger. You're in a good situation in, in, in this aspect. That guy, thanks to how good your teams have been, has played so much the last two years. Not to mention, he got you a playoff win last year so i mean although a drew DeShields is, is you know is so great and, and what he's done is you, you can't argue it uh bo alizos takes over here but no stranger to the game and no stranger to pressure situations no he's a phenomenal kid i think that you know our expectation is not going to fall off with our offense because he's in the game you know as you were able to see last year in that field yeah. game you know him stepping in and just you know, keeping the offense on rhythm. Now, he's a different player than Drew, and we're going to do some di things that are going to be a little bit different to highlight his skill set. Um, but he is – he's been patient. Uh, you, you've never heard a word about him, uh, you know, complaining about not getting reps here or there. Like, he's been a great teammate over the last couple years. He's been a student of the game over the last couple years. Um, and I'm just really excited for him to finally get that opportunity to showcase what he can do in our offense. Now, we look ahead at your uh, 2023 schedule here as it's on the screen right now. And that schedule, uh, Coach Bo, seven of those 10 teams that are on the screen right now were in playoffs last year. So, again, uh, no, you guys are no stranger to having a stacked schedule and playing tough opponents. But this year, no exception. Like I said, seven of 10 of those teams were in playoffs last year. Yeah, we're. I mean, we have a loaded non-conference schedule. Yeah. I think that that's really going to prepare us for our, our league schedule um, and get us battle tested as a young team. And, um, you know, obviously with, with the 16 teams making the playoffs, you know, it's not as important to win every single game. We want to win every single game, um, but it's not like life or death in, the, in that sense. So um, as long as we're playing our best football at the end of the year, you know, I think that we're going to be in a good situation. Obviously we're excited about, you know, the non-league games, you know, with Canfield and Woodridge and picking up Gerard's, uh, you know, a region 13 big team as well. So, uh, you know, we're excited about all those opportunities to showcase what we've been working on over the last, you know, six, seven, eight months or however long it's been. Absolutely. And of course, six of those games you can hear on the Q92 Sports Network. Can't wait to bring those games to you guys. But uh, the EBC coach, I, I always say like, you know, we're, in, you know, a lot of people sometimes I think overlook the EBC conference. And, and it's funny because someone who sees it year in and year out, I see the talent not only on the field, but I, I see the talent in the coaches in the EBC. And you've got West Branch rolling right now. Alliance is in a good spot right now. Carrollton's been steady for so many years. You know, you've got new blood in Minerva and Marlington as well. I mean, I just, I just feel like this conference doesn't always get the, uh, the respect that it deserves. No, I, I agree with you. I agree. I think that a lot of the time, you know, because of where we're located, that sometimes we don't get that highlight, that exposure that some right. other conferences do. Um, but I think that the level of play that we've showcased over the last couple of years and the level of, uh, you know, our coaching, like you said, coaching in our conference, you know, we're facing some complicated schemes offensively right. and defensively. And, um, you know, I think that 
our, our league overall. I mean, look at the just the quarterback position over the last couple of years. You know, Ooh. before Canton South left, you know, you had Poochie Snyder, Jackson Johnson at Salem, mm-hmm. you had Zerbro, you know, at, at Alliance, the Shields at West Branch, you know, the Avenage kid was a heck of a player from Marlington. You know, the list goes on and on of the great players that we've had in our league over the last couple of years. And I don't think that that's going to stop anytime soon, to be honest with you. I think it's just going to be a reload. Yeah, it's, it's going to be a lot of fun. And, and Coach, before I let you go, you know, the Internet, it, it shows you some things sometimes. Is, is there is there some new West Branch swag that's, that's going to be showing off this year? I mean, I'm just saying that the Twitter or X, whatever it's called now, there's this new helmet I keep seeing. Yeah, yeah, there you go. <laughs> we, uh, we change up our paint scheme a little bit, um, you know, just try and get some different things. West Branch in the 70s actually had a green helmet, so uh, we went back, paid tradition, paid homage to the 70s and whatnot, so we, we tried to spice things up. Um, and then we did get some new jerseys. We got some uh, stuff for from the Booster Club, and, uh, you know, we were able to, to do some nice things for our kids because of great fundraising. So we're going to re- reveal those uh, as we get closer to the season, and nice. you know, we might have some surprises up our sleeve with some of that swag. So just bringing uh, some new energy to the kids and, you know, to pay them – for all the success that we've had the last couple of years, that's what I see when I see like alumni and whatnot. Um, they're like, where was all this stuff when we were playing? I was like, <laughs> we wouldn't have this stuff if it wasn't for you guys. So, you know, we're excited. It's just another way to get excitement in our program. And um, at the end of the day, though, you know, we just got to line up and play some football and hopefully keep having success. See, this is why I think it's the younger coach. See, you guys get it, though. You guys understand how hyped kids can get over something like a new helmet or new threads, new uniforms. That's something that's going to just, just like inject it in these players' veins. They want it all day. I, I, I can only imagine the kids were hyped when they saw just the helmet alone. Oh, yeah. They were. I think there was a couple guys that are traditionalists that they were a little bit worried that the mm-hmm. green wouldn't, you know, really they were blown away from, from the uh, artwork and whatnot. So we're excited. I mean, it's, it's a great time to be in West Branch uh, football right now. Absolutely. Uh, well, Coach, I, I can't thank you enough for taking some time, especially now I know how busy you guys are. Like I said, we're going to be broadcasting uh, six of your games this year. Looking forward to talking to you on the sidelines before and after the game. Uh, looking forward to seeing the new threads. Congratulations on all your success at West Branch. And uh, looking forward to seeing what uh, this season has in store for you guys. Thank you so much. I appreciate you having me. Go Warriors. All right, Coach. Take care, buddy. You too. All right. It's Coach Cooper, head coach of – the West Branch Warriors, again, you can see that tough schedule that they have to play this season. And, of course, games you can catch right here on the Q92 Sports Network, both on AM 1310 and Q92RadioSports.com. You saw that list there and right there on your screen. If you're a West Branch Warrior supporter and you'd like to advertise in those games we're going to broadcast this fall, do us a favor, call us at 330-450-9250. Ask for John Bazika or Mark O'Brien. They'll get you all squared away. This has been Episode 7 of The Conference Room with Coach Cooper of the West Branch Warriors here on the Q92 Sports Network.